it's no secret that the birds you grow today are different than those grown 40 years ago, or even 20 years ago. But why is that? In recent years, there's been a lot of confusion amongst poultry consumers concerning the use of GMOs to make this difference possible. Hi, I'm Alyssa with South End Organics. According to a study completed at the University of Alberta, from 1957 to 2005, broiler growth increased by over 400% while simultaneously decreasing feed consumption by nearly 50%. The National Chicken Council reported an 85-day growout to reach 2.89 pounds of live weight in 1940, compared to a 47-day growout to reach 6.4 pounds of live weight in 2020. So what's responsible for this intense difference? Some might suggest that it's due to the use of steroids and antibiotics, but my personal favorite claim is that poultry growers today are using GMO chickens. GMO stands for Genetically Modified Organism, a name adopted from popular media in reference to genetically engineered organisms. GMO refers to changes made to the genetic makeup of any living organism using biotechnology. This could mean it's applied to anything from trees to fungus. These changes in genetic makeup are extremely targeted and often aim to change an organism to improve production or hardiness. For example, the first genetically modified organism was a bacteria strain that produces insulin as a treatment for diabetes, modified to produce insulin at higher quantities more quickly. Cotton is another example of an organism that's been genetically modified. GMO cotton is resistant to bollworms. Alfalfa, primarily used to feed cattle, has been genetically modified to be resistant to most herbicides, allowing farmers to protect their crops from weeds, which can reduce production and lower the nutritional quality of the alfalfa. The only genetically modified animal currently approved by the FDA is Aqua Advantage salmon. Atlantic salmon modified to reach an important growth point more rapidly. But let's get back to the birds. The broilers of today are very simply not genetically modified. Rather, the result of decades of genetic selection or selective breeding towards a rapidly growing, heavily muscled, feed efficient animal. This means that at no point have genes from other species been introduced to the genetic composition of the birds filling commercial poultry houses across the country today. Genetic selection, which is what's used in the poultry industry, is broadly defined as the breeding of plants and animals in order to selectively develop characteristics in the offspring by selecting parent stock with the desired traits. This can mean choosing corn with sturdier stalks to seed the next growing season, or breeding a dairy cow with poor feet and legs to a bull with exceptional feet and legs. Genetic selection has been occurring for decades and was first recorded in the poultry industry in 1946 when a group of major poultry and egg organizations partnered with a supermarket chain to host the Chicken of Tomorrow contest. The goal of this contest was to find the largest bird with the most breast meat. Today, the goals of genetic selection in the poultry industry have shifted just a bit. Although bird size and muscle mass are still at the forefront of conversation, things like disease resistance, skin and feather color, bone structure, and feed conversion have all entered the mix as well. Genetic selection happens incredibly rapidly in poultry production due to the short amount of time it takes to establish a new generation. In comparison to cattle, which take nine months to produce an offspring, chickens only take 21 days to fully incubate and hatch. This has allowed for exponential progress in the last several decades. Broilers today are able to grow to market weight in six to nine weeks using only 1.79 pounds of feed per pound of body weight on average. Additionally, average mortality has been reduced to 5.3% compared to 12% in 1940. Genetic selection is not the only process at work here either. It's important to remember that improvements in veterinary medicine, nutrition, and environmental technology all contribute to our ability to grow the chicken of tomorrow. Today's agriculture landscape is built almost entirely around the idea of farmers, ranchers, and growers producing enough food to provide for the rest of us. Genetic modification and genetic selection are simply mechanisms used to help achieve that goal. Although these practices have drawn negative attention to the ag industry in recent years, they've allowed us to reduce the amount of feed needed to grow a bird to market weight, cut the time needed to grow that bird in half, and improve mortality across the grow out by nearly 7%. So, to the researchers, breeders, and farmers who contribute to these advances, 
Thank you for your dedication to building an efficient industry capable of providing the world with its favorite lean protein. And for those of us that don't fit into one of those categories, next time you're eating your Bojangles breakfast biscuit, your Chick-fil-A nugget meal, or your favorite salad, remember that genetic selection and your local poultry farmers made that possible. As always, thank you for watching. And of course, if you have any questions about our business and products, please reach out to Alan at SouthlandOrganics.com or call us at 800-608-3755. If you have questions for me, I am available at Alyssa at SouthlandOrganics.com. Please like and subscribe to Poultry Biosecurity to receive updates on our newest videos and follow us on social media at Southland Organics.